Hello, hello, hello. <clears throat> I see the red bar moving, which means we must be live. You guys give me a quick sound check. Let me know that it is working. I'm here for number four. Wow. <laughs> Look at Debbie. Look at this. Look at Debbie, hold on. I, I, got a, I got a meme for Debbie. Hold on. Uh, where is it? Hold on. I got I got a meme. Got to got to put it in there. Hold on. Uh, let's see. Oh man, where is it? There we go. There's Debbie walking in. Check out general chat guys in Discord and you will see uh Debbie's number 4 dance. We'll see if anybody drops some big pip chips tonight to keep Debbie from winning number four. <laughs> Good in Jersey. All right, so how was everybody's Monday? I hope it went well. Sounds like I'm getting one right now. I'm telling you guys, if she wins tonight, she got 250 last time, so I think it's only fair tonight she gets 500 pip chips if she can win number four, which would be crazy. We've got 500 right there. Bam. I'm going to have to like, start paying Debbie money. Like, hey, what are you doing? Buy Debbie's class on uh, how to win pip chips, right? I feel like like that's where we're at. All right, so interesting day today. I was actually pulling this up for uh, my, the boy's mom, the boy's ex-wife. Uh, she's been trying to sell her house for like the last year. Uh, it's on the water, and there's like people that make dumb comments. And the, the two most recent ones, one guy decided to pull out of the contract because he's like, wait, you know, there could be flooding at the house. It's like, dude, you live on the water. What do you expect? Like, you have to prepare for that. And then the other person basically threw, like, such a ridiculous lowball offer in. It, like, wasn't even worth their time responding back to the person. But uh, I was like, hey, look, that's good. That's a good number. Um, we should investigate. Do you want a recount? We can do, like, a recount. See if, uh, you know, the recount would, would change the uh, results. Maybe. Maybe. Um, I was waiting for this number. Let's see if it goes through now. Come on. Da, da. Okay. Okay. A little bit better. All right. That's, I was looking for that number to see if we get uh, any play off of it. Um, probably eh, maybe a little tiny bit, but not too much. All right. Overall for the day today, uh, we definitely had some big movers. There's a couple small trades sprinkled throughout the day. Some great trades last night. Um, the Swiss was like insane last night um, and then kind of flatlined today. Uh, but a bunch of little small trades today. If you're looking at the 24-hour pip changes, really nothing... I don't know. I wouldn't say there's anything earth shattering in here as far as movement goes. I mean, the pound moved minus seven, Aussie minus six, although it was a nice little trade in that one. Uh, big move of the day was minus 53 on the pound dollar. Um, and again, a lot of that is just retracing what we saw last week. But for the most part, minus against the euro, which is basically just flat. Um, dollar just kind of did its thing, right? Dollar had a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of a boost, but nothing too crazy. Um, again, I would say traders market. Now, this week is a pretty interesting week, guys. Just so everybody's on the same page, remember that this is the basically going into a holiday weekend. So, again, non-farm has been moved forward, okay? Because Friday is, uh, you know, July third. You know, they do a little partying, trading. You know, we, you know, ended early this week. So uh, again, it will make it a little bit interesting of a week. Volumes may be lower. Um, it is a very, very popular, um, you know, week for vacations. I actually have a couple kids. Um, on vacation this week, which is good, excuse me, but it's also bad at the same point. Um, we actually have a, one of the coaches that I've been trying to get a scrimmage with to get ready for a tournament in two weeks. He's like, can you do Thursday? I'm like, yeah, I got a couple kids missing, but yeah, we can do Thursday. <laughs> so it's like, I got enough for a scrimmage, but it's kind of like, yeah, I wish that the whole team was there, but oh well, um, at least we're getting the scrimmage in before tournament time. So that's all that really matters. Um, but as you can see, guys, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, uh, pound dollar, all big dollar strength, dollar CAD more or less flat, Aussie dollar basically flat, although there was a couple good shorts there today. Um, Euro pound, again, seeing that pound weakness versus the yen, the pound didn't have too much weakness, but again, versus the dollar as well as the euro, you can see that it's weakness across the board and it's continuing to fall. Um, I, if you guys, you know, anybody that is subscribed to the weekly newsletter, you know that my comment for the pound this week basically talked about how... Um, you know, July 1st is the kind of the last day to request the extension, although the UK has basically said, we're not doing it. No, it's not happening. Um, I mean, there's still time really until the last second they could just say, you know what? Never mind. We changed our mind. We'll take the extension. Um, but I, I'm, I'm pretty sure they're not going to at this point. So, um, yeah, 
Yeah, so there will not be an extension, which basically means that um, during the negotiation phase, um, the negotiation phase will officially end in December. And then it's like out. Um, although they haven't come up with anything really that made sense in six months. I don't know. And eh, we'll see what the rest of the six months you know, has to do. Um, like I said, I think when they went through this kind of uh, whole, you know, the, the regulations on the negotiation, I don't think they ever planned for COVID-19 to kind of come around. So I'm kind of surprised they didn't put an extension just because of that. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw today the news. Uh, it looks like Arizona has reshut down bars, water parks, movie theaters, and something else. Um, yeah, so it's coming back. And yet you still see people going out there without masks on. I actually took Reese down to uh, downtown Annapolis today. And we didn't get out of the car, but I think two people in all of downtown Annapolis had masks on. Everyone's like, we're outside. It's like, but there's a lot of you here. So yeah, I guess, you know, COVID is just one of those made up things in your head at this point. <laughs> Um, yeah, well, I saw Texas was shutting down taverns at the end of last week. Um, and again, it makes sense. Uh, there's a certain population, the same population that was eating Tide Pods is now also the ones that is going out and packing bars. So yeah. Um, and that's okay. Did you see Nancy? I don't know if you guys saw this. And again, I, I don't want to make the stream political, but did you guys see Nancy was proposing that we drop the voting age to 16? <laughs> I was like, wait, what? Are you serious? <laughs> Thinking about it. the things that I did at 16, should I have been voting for the leaders of the United States? No. <laughs> it's like, yeah. <laughs> 16. Yeah, guys. Some states you can drive at 16. Some, t some states you're not mature enough. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like video games. Yeah. I'm good at video games, so I should vote for the president. Yeah, that's a good idea. Sure. <sighs> Gotta love America. Go America. All right, guys. So as far as the news today, nothing really crazy. Pending home sales, that kind of went up. Um, again, the Chinese number is showing a little bit more expansion than predicted. Not too bad. Tomorrow, we got some CAD numbers and we have PAL. So tomorrow morning looks like it could be an interesting morning. Um, again, the GDP number is kind of important. Uh, you know, previous was minus seven. They're supposed to come in at minus 12.5. It has the potential to be worse. Um, maybe, maybe not. Again, a lot of the other numbers have been kind of over forecasting. So the CAD should have some some, some movement tomorrow. Uh, CAD yen in particular, I'll show you guys tonight, is in a, actually in kind of an interesting place right now. Uh, there may be some type of an overnight short in that one. But again, it's something you've got to prepare for for tomorrow. Chicago PMI and consumer confidence are kind of nice to know numbers. The 10 a.m. tomorrow consumer confidence number is important because it is at that magical 10 o'clock in the morning number. And it's supposed to be higher than before. Eh, I mean, we'll see. Uh, confidence being higher is probably good. Um, again, that typically leads to better retail sales. So yeah, that could be an interesting number. And again, they're preparing for it to be good. Market goes up, it's bad. All of a sudden that could turn and flip us right back to the downside. So just keep an eye on that one. And then again, you know, market will be at lunch at 1230, but Powell speaking again, testifying. Um, does it say what he's speaking tomorrow? Oh uh, yeah, he's testifying um, before the, uh, yeah, along with Secretary Munchkin, uh, before the House Financial Services Committee. So yeah, it's a House thing. So yeah, there'll be some politically charged questions in there, I'm sure. Um, I don't know, we'll see. We'll see. Um, <laughs> he says the recovery path is extraordinarily uncertain. Well, no kidding, because nobody has any idea what the, you know what's going on with the coronavirus. So that's what we got tomorrow morning. So again, should have some fireworks in the morning, afternoon. It probably will just peter out. Uh, we'll see what it does. Uh, but that's what we have on task for tomorrow. As far as the scanner goes, uh, biggest glaring thing in the scanner is check out this pound side. Everything in the pound is just getting beat up right now down. You'll see there's a bit of a pullback versus the CAD, yen, and New Zealand. Okay, those are giving us those true downtrend setups. But also Swiss and dollar basically giving us confirmation to the downside, just giving us more weakness in there. Okay, um, Aussie's giving us, for the most part, minus versus the dollar, which is basically consolidating down. And you can see it's down, you know, nine pips for the day in 24 hours. So for the most part, it's given us, you know, positive kind of outlooks on things. Um, but I wouldn't say it's a driving, you know, it's not a, a huge driving factor uh, looking across the board. It's kind of been whips all back and forth today. Um, the CAD basket is kind of all over the place. You can see, you know, we lead here, then we're second, then we're first, then we're second, then we're second, second, yet everything is blue over here. Okay, so CAD is kind of scrambled. I would say it's just a reactionary currency. It will move tomorrow with the GDP number um, that will kind of move that around. Um, Euro, Euro is mixed. Okay. Obviously great day versus the pound, extremely bullish, right? 
But then you come down here versus the dollar and it's showing you, you know, consolidating bearish, but yet it's green in the last 24 hours. So I'd say it's more consolidating, kind of, you know, again, waiting for some news, um, something to kick around. Uh, about the only thing that, you know, is giving us those confirmation signals is, again, obviously the euro pound, but then euro yen. Okay. And then euro cat is just weak. So, um, yeah, that's, you know, euro is kind of, like I said, nothing is super strong. Uh, as far as all the majors go, you can see nothing is in setup right now. It's showing us dollar strength across the board, which we already knew. Um, but then again, at the same time, in the second piece, you're seeing, you know, again, versus the Aussie down six. So nothing really big versus this one. It's up six versus the pound. Again, that is dollar strength. Not actually, again, that's dollar weakness of that pair, but that's dollar strength here. Um, so yeah, pretty clean, right? First position up, second position showing down. So again, dollar strength across the board. Um, we'll see. Uh, I think that can get evaporated pretty quickly tomorrow um, when Powell speaks. Um, I'm just, I just have a feeling that that could have some issues. Um, we do have a bunch of middle-aged uh, acting worse than 60-year-old. Middle-aged, I would say older people. Older people are, are acting like 16-year-olds. And middle... I don't know, Ernest. Why don't you define middle age? What do you think middle age means? That's what I'm curious about. Um, no recount, just straight ban. Yeah, it's a Jersey mob. Um, yeah, so go ahead. I want to hear what Ernest said, what Ernest thinks is middle aged. I don't know. Maybe in Texas, middle age is different than what it is here. I don't know. Come on, my friend. What do you think middle age is? Because there's crazy people everywhere. <laughs> I'm away for your types. All right, with that said, I'm going to go into the charts as we are all waiting anxiously for Ernest to answer what 35 to 50. I mean, I would say there's probably, hmm, I don't know. <laughs> Debbie's like, whoa, hey. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess. I mean, yes, there are people in that age group. There are people much older. Than, I mean, there. I would say like the, yeah, I would say the 75 to 80 or, you know, I would say the, 65 to 75 group is acting pretty bad too. The ones that are all elected. I think the elected officials are all have lost their marbles. Yeah, I think they're crazy. <laughs> 75 to 80. It's middle aged. Pattern trader, I wish 75 to 80 was middle aged. That means we'd all live to like 120. But I feel like as fast as my body is falling apart now, I feel like I would not make, you know, 120. Just I'm just not gonna go that far. It's just not gonna work. <laughs> um yeah we'll see all right i keep hitting the button and i keep forgetting to do click it all right so let's go right into charts so aussie dollar although this one is only down four pips again we had a nice rally up and then a nice pullback so here uh where is it let's see right here okay you guys can see that it did gap in a lower direction and then continue to push lower and actually grab some water south so there was actually a long in here i didn't catch the long out of this one i was doing something else but if you guys see, you have these ascending wicks right here. And there's actually a pretty nice long off of that today. Um, I had more something set up here. Again, it had been in a tested area. I was looking for that short. And again, grabbed it here to the downside. Ended up coming back. Not getting the entry off the kind of the second entry. And then just continuing to push all the way back down to that same zone. Again, if I continue that zone across, you can see that, again, that was its its target. So more or less, it's basing. Um, again, I was like, you know, I was up and in here. Um... At this point, I would say I'll leave this up here. Um, I think this zone is probably good for one more hit up top. And barely, barely, you can see, we just barely entered that white zone. Um, again, this is definitely something that this could be triggered tomorrow morning. Because remember, you know, we got the big guy speaking. And not the big, big guy, but Powell's is pretty big. Um, with him speaking tomorrow, again, with consumer confidence numbers, there's a lot of things that could happen with gold and inflation and supporting the economy. And, you know, statements like, you know, we'll do everything on our power, Right. I don't know. We'll see. I mean, they missed, you know, they missed the housing sales today. Huge. So, or the pending sales, huge. So yeah, right now where we are though, we're sitting right here, smack in the middle. We're literally almost like the 50% mark between these two. Um, I'd wait till we get top or bottom 68.89 or 68.45 to the bottom. Um, like I said, you guys can see that the uh, <laughs> price is sitting literally right here in the middle, right? Right at that 50% mark. All right. So top, bottom, either of those is too good. Of the two, I would rate this one probably an A plus or a, a probably A. This would be like an A minus B plus because again, it's already been hit, although it did have a nice formation with the wicks going higher, 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 higher. And then again, a retest that was even higher again. So again, continuing to move to the top side. Okay. I'll see again. I'll see an interesting place. So this is an area that has been tested. Um, 
it's an all right zone. Again, it's kind of in the middle of kind of top and bottom. We still have this Harry Potter that we're waiting for over here. You know, it did go down. Uh, this zone down here, this green, I would not be trading this one long, um, even though it, it does meet the parameters, but it's more because of the gap. Look at this. We had the drive through here. We've had a push, 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 and push all in that same area. There's only so many buyers that are, that are going to exist in that area. So although we have this a bit lower, we may turn this into, again, we'll see how far it moves by tomorrow. We may turn it into kind of a Harry Potter to the downside using that level. Um, again, it's been through that zone. It's hit that zone, that same area about five times now. That's typically when we're seeing break. So that may be an interesting setup. We are at a smaller zone right now. So there may be something in the overnight on this one. Although, you know, it did spend a, a, a decent amount of time here kind of pushing and probing higher. Um, I think the cleanest entry in the overnight is obviously up here at this uh, 74.28. Again, popped, went sideways, and nice push down has been unable to get back. And again, we had um, sells up at 74.48. So that's something to keep an eye on later on this week, this 74.28. Again, Harry Potter breaking below 73.32. And 72.82 would be an area here where we'll, we'll use for a target or potential longs when we get back down to that level, maybe maybe Wednesday. Um, Thursday, I'd be very cautious putting on too many trades because people are going to be out the door going to barbecues. Spreading the COVID. <laughs> Spreading the Rona even more. Um, if we actually got invited, my wife's like, we're not going, are we? It's like, I don't know. Are we staying home? She's like, no, we're not going. Not safe. So we'll see how that goes. Ernest, what do you cook? Have you, Ernest, have you, have, have you created the menu yet for this weekend? I know you're barbecuing something. But I know how you I know how you function. A lot of times you go to the butcher like two days before. But I didn't know if you already uh the kids had already put their uh requests in. Curious to see what you are cooking this weekend. Oh I don't, I don't, I don't know if my deck will be ready. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'll rip the smoker out. I don't know. Maybe I'll rip the sous vide out. Hey, Ernest, by the way, everybody, you need to send Ernest nasty messages. He posted an amazing Oh god, get out of here. Cauliflower barbecue? No, I can't do it. Um, Ernest, you never sent me the recipe for those wings. Guys, he had a picture on Instagram, uh, these garlic wings that he said he sued. I want to know, I want the recipe, and he never sent it to me. He told me he would. So what we're going to do is we're going to start putting penalties in for Ernest. We're going to start putting like a negative pip chip penalty. When he posts really, really good Instagram photos of his food, but then doesn't share the recipe with the group, right? I mean, I think that's fair, right? That's community rules. Um, I'll send it to you tonight. All right, see how this works, guys? Look, you threaten to take his pip chips away, and bam, he's like sending recipes. You want the book? I got the book. Um, bought a ribs last night. You got ribs last night? Yeah. I, I don't, I, honestly, I don't like our Sam's Club ribs. They're just not that good. I, I'm gonna probably end up doing chicken. Um, 200 pip chips, and I'll send it right away. <laughs> Look at that. He's expediting the service now. Um, you are, yeah. So last week we had a position in Euro Yen that we're looking to short up here around 121.34. We ended up bouncing right off of that zone. What about, let's see, uh, 22, about 10, 11 o'clock this morning. Uh, it was actually right at 10 o'clock. Uh, I didn't actually take this trade. I missed this one. I ended up seeing this one when it was over here, um, like 12, 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I looked and I was like, man, look at that. So I did not get my entry in this one. As you can see, the line that we had drawn last week, it ended up hitting the line. I didn't get filled on the trade. Um, and saw this one after the fact, but it was a nice little push away. Um, had you taken this position, uh, again, this was one we did. I mean, we've been talking about this one for a while. You guys can see it did end up bouncing off about 5 p.m. Um, it ended up hitting its one to three risk of reward. So I don't know if you guys had it on there from last week. I did. I just didn't get filled on it. I guess I wasn't able to cover the spread on it. Um, nice little pushback. Again, it was basically off of this one hour area. Uh, that zone, again, I would say that that zone is probably good for another hit. Um, I'll extend this across now. Reason being is it spent almost no time there. And look at this. On a spike at 10 o'clock, dinged it and came right back down again. So it was a nice push. I mean, there's not much you can say about it. Uh, again, you can see the buyer slammed it down hard here. And same thing. I mean, it was, it, was, it was in a rally. I mean, it was pushing. It pulled back and bam, it slammed into it. But the second it hit this thing, man, it, hit, it ran right into a wall and turned and flipped. And that was a nice little drop to the downside. I mean, you're talking about... About 60 pips. So I would say keep that you know keep that on your radar again. Um, there's a potential trade setup in this one. Um, and again, most likely it's going to be over here. And again, this could be a POW thing because again, POW, you know, what he says will move around the market. Um, but we'll see what it does. I mean, if it continues to fall and collapse, obviously it's moved away from the zone. But definitely keep that one on your radar as well. And that's 121.34. Okay. 
Um, looking at the pound yen. So pound yen has moved a total of three pips in the last 24 hours. But there were some setups in here today. Okay. Uh, as you can see right here. Okay. This it's turning yellow because it, it's actually in a downtrend setup formation. But again, we had a zone here. And again, we started pushing back and through. We closed here in the zone. We ended up gapping just past it. And then it continued to push higher, higher, higher. There was an area up here that we had talked about last week as well. Kind of this drop and it pulled back and kind of stabilized, right? One wick, lower wick, lower wick, lower wick, lower wick. And again, this is price action. Every time they pushed up, the seller stepped in sooner, 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 and started getting more aggressive. And again, slammed it down once, slammed it down again. And that was the, you know, that was the, the, the straw that broke the camel's back. You can see there was one entry, ended up hitting top profit target, ended up hitting again, hitting one to three, one to five, came all the way back, ended up hitting again, came all the way back to the one to three and the one to five, bounced off the bottom, and we're coming up again. So it's been up here a couple different times. Based off of the reaction that it had here at 10 o'clock this morning, it is definitely, I would say in my eyes, it's probably worth one more target. It's just whether you take the aggressive entry or you wait for the a bit more conservative up at the top at the 132.63. But three different entries today, one, two, and three, okay, all bouncing off the same level. And in fact, there was actually a long in here, although the way that this was driving to the downside, I don't know that I, I, I wasn't really as excited about the long, um, just the shorts, this level up here was a, a pretty nice little ledge. So yeah, minus four pips in 24 hours. And you can see that each of these is worth 30. There's 30 there, obviously 30 there. This one ended up traveling 50 to the downside. This entry here, again, ended up moving about 45 to the downside, um, Again, way over it's one to three risk to reward ratio. So a lot of action inside of the pound today on the 30 minute chart. Um, if you weren't trading that one, you missed out on this one. This was a, this was a, a good one for the day. Uh, as last night, actually overnight and into there. Um, oh, hold on, one of my, one of my parents. Oh, no worries. Uh, hold on. I have, this guy will send me a whole bunch of messages. Hold on. Um, there we go. All right. He was like, can you move the scrimmage? We're out of town. And I'm like, no, unfortunately they can't move it. And I was like, no, I'm not. He's like, he's like, I was just kidding. I swear. I was just kidding. It's like, no, it's fine. I don't care. Um, I mean, it's like the day before like 4th of July. Like I, I get it. <laughs> um, so that's what you have guys. Aggressive entry. We're getting close. Um, the 132.63 is a little bit more conservative, but again, that has only been barely touched. Um, and I think that's also a very valid zone for an entry. Most likely the London open is, um, most likely when that one kind of will, will take off pound dollar. Um, I don't need a snipping tool. Nope. Don't need to save that. All right, here we go. So pound yen or pound dollar pound dollar is down 50. Um, we ended up not hitting really as much today. Whoops. Um, you guys can see, we ended up going off a zone here and this zone hit, uh, oops, it helps me hit the right button. I'm like, why is the time not working? Um, this was a 10 o'clock yeah, right around a 10 o'clock hit as well. Uh, I didn't like this one as much, but again, it did pop. It did go back to a level. Uh, it's actually in a bit of a zone right now. You guys can see that there's a zone right here and there's a knockout just slightly above it. This 120, what is it? 123, 34 to the downside. Uh, I think this one has enough room. I had this one measured out on the other platform. Yeah, there we go. Yep. So this one, uh, again, it, it's already left. It's kind of given us the confirmation in about six minutes. We'll have the green for the red, green, red to the downside. Uh, the one to three, I think is fine. And this one will probably go about a one to four. Uh, the one to five is a bit long for me in this. Uh, but again, it's just a continuation trade. Um, Again, bouncing off some one-hour zones. Uh, I didn't like this one as much. I think the pound yen was easier trade setup. Uh, but again, this was one of those 10 o'clock reversals. I mean, it ran into a, an hourly zone right at 10 o'clock when news came out. And, and again, the 10 o'clock news today was not even anything big. It was pending home sales. So it wasn't even like it was an earth-shattering news release, right? I mean, it wasn't like it was retail sales or something. It was literally pending home sales. But it was a huge miss. Assuming it would be 19 or 18.9, it was like 44. That's a pretty big miss. Um, and again, everybody trying to sell their homes will be happy. Like, yeah, it's a seller's market again. Um, probably more of a buyer's market than anything else at this point, though. But again, that's what we have. Um, look at this one on, on a grander scale. Again, this one has been pretty healthily pushing to the downside. I would say at this point, yep, still bearish. Um, a little bit of a bumps in here, but I'd be looking for this thing to come down to this one. And probably... Hmm. 
I mean, I think this thing by the end of the week could be pushing down here to like the 122s, maybe even the 121.75s. Um, 121.90 would be kind of in this range right here, right above this touch bracket or this knockout. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think this one will continue to push to the downside. I don't think the U.S., you know, I don't think with the U.S. not being here, it's going to really affect too much. Um, yeah, that's what we got going here. Like I said, pound yen I think is better setups, but there's definitely a, you know, a short in this one as well. Um, Euro pound. So Euro pound, that's where we are on the daily, okay? On the four hour, it's been a little bit harder to grab, okay? Um, again, it's been pretty decent, but looking to the, be to the left, you can see there's not really not really a great area here. Any of these turns, they kind of go slow, right? This was a, a very clean one, but you know, whoops. Wick, lower wick, lower wick, lower wick. And that's what this one went off of, right? That was the entry in here, okay? Now we kind of have the same pattern. Wick, another wick, another wick, another wick. And that's kind of where we're just below right now. Again, kind of this area here. And we're sitting right below that at this level. So. There's some areas up here. Um, I don't really love too many of them. Um, I think the best way to play, I mean, again, these are quite large levels on a four hour. I think the best way to play this will literally be over here on kind of like the, on an hourly, kind of a failure to go higher. Uh, there's no real clean ones right now, uh, but something along, you know, something like this again, for this, you get a nice pop away and then a pull back to the same level. Right now, there is not a setup, right? It is already starting to collapse, and this one may continue to push to the downside. Uh, just kind of in a parabolic retracement format. I mean, these were three candles straight up in the air reacting from the weekend. Again, this may just continue to grind and push lower. Um, fortunately, it didn't. I mean, this, this is the correct area for a fail to go higher, but at this point, it's just starting to grind. It's already starting to grind and go lower. So the bus may have left us on this one. Uh, we may not have an entry, but keep this one marked off. Uh, again, this may be one of those ones where we set an alert, you know, somewhere in this area, the 9161. Um, knowing when it comes back up, I mean, again, nice reaction off. It, it pushed, it pushed, it pushed, it pushed again, and then bam, got hammered. So we know there's sellers there. Uh, it's a pretty decent move away at this point already. I mean, you're talking, it's about 30 pips. Um, it's got about another 40 pips to the downside before it runs into an area of true buyers. So, eh, I would say I'm bearish this one as well. Um, well, I'm bearish the pound. So, let me see. When do we have Euro News this week? Um, not tomorrow. Man, it's a week. It's a week. The only day we have pound news this week is Friday the, th the 3rd. There is final services PMI. It's an orange number. Hold on. I really can't believe there's no euro news this week. Seriously? Um, we do have manufacturing data. We have a whole lot of PMI data on Wednesday. Um... Thursday, we have some PPI and unemployment data. So it, there is some potential maybe Thursday. Yeah, it looks like Thursday is going to be the best day. Let me pull that in so you guys can see it real quick. Looks like Thursday over here. Well, Wednesday has all this manufacturing PMI data. But this PPI and the unemployment rate may give us some kind of movement on Thursday. And again, about 5 o'clock in the morning. So there may be some movement off of that. It's marked yellow because, again, it's... Holiday week, so everything is kind of skewed, but maybe, maybe that'll give us some, um, you know, some some action. Uh, but right now, this pair actually, I would say, if this holds, then again we can go higher, look for shorts um, just above this area at ninety one sixty one, probably ninety one seventy ish area. Um, but if we do continue to break to the downside, look for a retrace of this level in here, and that's again. Nice, nice pop up and then a parabolic retracement back to the downside. Because again, this is a very fast ascent in a very short period of time. All right. Euro dollar. So Euro dollar. Last week, we ended up riding through a zone here. Um, kind of like a little bit of a funky area. But as you can see, that the, the, the high peaks are starting to come lower down. And for the most part, we were kind of in a downward channel, right? If you guys can see the equidistant channel here. Uh, and then we kind of broke out, but then we kind of sucked right back down to the same level. So 111.80 
was a big zone uh, down here, at least on the four hour that kind of turned price around a few times, right? This 111.80. At this point, again, I would say that I am bearish this position. I am pro US right now. So again, it will continue to fall, but it's kind of pinched in, right? So in an hour that we have a zone above and below, right? We're talking about 11 pips above and about 15 pips below. So we're kind of pinched, right? Which gives us kind of an area here. And again, this is a nice... I mean, nice rally, nice basing, and then it hammers it down. Same thing here. Been been here a few times. I don't really love this zone as much. So, you know, we do have a zone a little higher here as well. I do like the reaction off of this, but this reaction is just as strong. So what I would say is you can use kind of one 112.78. And then again, I would continue this across from this level and use this 111.80 and use kind of a top side here. Oops. Use top side selling here. Change that to white. Um, right in there. So you uh, actually let me. There we go. So top side one twelve seventy eight. Bottom side one eleven eighty. Um, wait till we go top and bottom. And like I said, you're only about eh, about thirty eight pips from the from the top and about sixty lower. I just don't like this zone because again, you can see it. The zone is actually over here, so I do expect it to kind of punch a little bit farther in. Okay. Um, you know what? Here, let's make this. I know somebody with OCD would be like, "Wait, why is it not straight?" All right, there we go. Dollar cat. So ah, dollar cat up two pips in twenty four hours. All right, uh, you can see right in here, let's see, right right here is where the gap was for the week. Um, we had had kind of a smaller zone here, marked top and bottom. Um, I guess I can clean some of this up because we did push higher last week. Let's see, let's pull these out so we can update some charts here. Uh, let's go to an hourly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'd probably use this one. And I'm wondering if we're going to form one of these again, where it bounces back and forth like many times. This one, look, boom, 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 boom. So we could be getting back in the same kind of new pattern here. Okay. This one was great. It hit like five top, five bottom. So we can probably adjust these and move these over. Actually, I should already have the prices. So let me erase the prices now. Boom, 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 boom. We'll clean those off. And again, those were, that was a great sideways channel there. Um, I wouldn't use this one right now, right? I would use this guy right here and that guy there. All right, so um, kind of looking at this zone as our top side and this side as our bottom side. Now, we do have news tomorrow morning. Oh, let me reset the, uh, oops. Uh, all that off, apply filter, go to tomorrow. We do have this. Okay, we do have this. All right, so that's something we got to watch out for. Um, but right now, again, 136.96, 136.21, top and bottom is what I'd be looking for for bouncing sideways on that one. Dollar yen. All right, so here was a position we had last week, and you can see that this really kind of sucked things in. Uh, and again, it, it continued the, into this week. Um, it kind of moved more than I thought it would. Um, we had a bit of position here. I think we did this one like a really, really low time frame. I don't know. Let me remove it all so we can see it. There we go. All right. Um, let's refresh. Pull that one back up. All right, so had a bit of a zone here where you're looking for entry. Um, it looks like this one may have broken right above the top side. Uh, let's go ahead and mark that here. Uh, 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 uh. Boom. Okay. Problem is it's definitely not knockout range. You can see that's where we're at right now. It did burst in, started the pullback. And again, it looks like it's starting to put a lower high in. Um, yeah, you can see it went just higher than the zone. Whoops. Um, there's the top. Yep. Just higher by like a very, very little, we may not even got to stop that on that position. Oh, it's only like half a pip. So yeah, you may actually have survived that one. Um, all right, so that's where we're at. Uh, I would say that this one looks like it's running into sellers right now inside of this range. Again, a little bit of a smaller zone in here. But I would say this one looks like it wants to retrace. Um, big question is if this is the turn 
will this hold and will it go up one, one more or will continue to push back to the downside? Um, but that may be a little overnight position right there. It's nowhere close to a knockout, so it's not something we can take there. Um, something along those lines. Get that little entry, drop it to the downside. Um, how about the 108.26? Mm, is there a 108.26? And this is, did I put the wrong numbers in? Mm, I don't see a 108.26. Or are you talking about the zone up here at the 108.26? Are you talking about this? This little bit right here? Yeah, you're talking about that. We're talking about that zone right there. Um, It's kind of no man's land on the hourly. I would just take it up. I would just do the top one. I mean, you can see they got a retrace off of it. We can see it on the 30 minute. No, I mean, see, here's that. Here's the bottom of that on the four hour. So there's a bit of a zone before it. I mean, if you're going to do it on a 30 minute, you could take it off of there, right? But that's coming in at. Yeah, I mean, there, there's, there's that. That zone starts at 108.13 and goes to 108.23. Yeah. So, I mean, four hour, you know, again, four hour. Yeah, that's the bottom of that zone. But I mean, drop it down to a 30 minute. You can really, you know, really dial it in and, and it actually it finds it. Here, actually this one, but either of those two is fine. I mean, this is a nice reaction here and this is a nice reaction here. So either. Pick your poison. <laughs> either one of them works. Um, and again, you can see this one spent a lot more time here. It's more of a, I believe it's an hourly. Yeah, it's right here. And actually this one, we could shrink a bit. Actually this one, we could have um, pulled it from there. There you go. So it didn't quite get to the one to three. This one should have been short actually. Wait, why is it moving? Stop doing that. Oh, it should have been there. Sometimes the snap function really gets to me like, why are you snapping? No. Come on, stop. There we go. Something along those lines. Yeah, so again, a lot of this one earnest for me would be time of day it hits. So again, we're in a small kind of overnight position right here. You know, again, on the 30 minute, you can see that zone up top right there. The 108 to 108 13 and 108 23. Uh, this knockout does not work for me, and then this one just higher. So again, if we manage to rally through this one breaks, be looking to short this one. And again, that would be more of a 10 o'clock tomorrow morning type trade setup. Um, yeah. Hey Ryan, are you still going to go over the Harry Potter setup? Yeah, Jaguar, I can. I'll wait to the end to do it. Or I mean, yeah, I'll wait till. I think there's another one set up. Um, I think I have another one set up. Yeah, I'll go over it. I'll go. I'll go over all the details for it uh, in a bit. But yeah, I will. I will cover it because I remember I told you I would. All right. So that's the end. I mean, I don't. I don't love this one, Ernest. This one is just not. Lately, it's just been not great. I mean, today the forty-five pips was probably the best it's had. I mean, look at this. They did nothing last week, so this this big spike was the best that it's had for a while. Uh, dollar Swiss. So this one was on honestly on crack. Um, we had a level drawn down here at right above 93.39. You guys can see it right at the bottom of this. I mean, it fell into it and literally just skyrocketed. Now, it also happened to run into a zone that we had, mar we had marked off last week up north, right? We talked about buys down here at 94.39 and sells at 95.20. And you can see it came down and literally tagged that black line on the bottom side and came and hit the bottom side up here. So this one for me is more set up um, inside of kind of a retracement than anything that we have on the board tonight. Um, kind of in this area here. in that range. And again, this is making it smaller looking for entries in this one, but kind of the same idea. I mean, you know, doing it this way is kind of giving you really kind of just smaller risk, but I mean, could it, you know, is there anything that's going to stop this one? You know, 
before it comes back down into like that range? Probably not. So I am bearish in the overnight on this one. Um, I mean, this could go for any number of reasons. This would definitely be some type of a news thing. But yeah, definitely could see this one turning, flipping, and pushing back down again. Uh, and that's where I'm set up. And again, this is a fair to go higher situation, as well as, again, these are the zones that we were talking about last night or last week, the 95.20 and the 94.39, okay? Uh, this mo this movement today off this was literally just crazy. I mean, 82 pips in this pair. The daily ATR on this one is only 61. So it was definitely over, again, almost one and a half times its ATR. And you can see it here on the four hour, look at this thing. This one four hour window was just bam. I mean, came down, hit, hit, hit it, grind, 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 boom. And then literally just punched right up into that four hour zone. So again, that one is kind of set there uh, for that short, okay? Um, Pull this off right now. Let's see, double click that. Oh, uh, what else we got in here? Pull that. There we go. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. All right, so there we go. All right. Now let's go over the indices, okay? And Q. All right, so here, I, Jack, I can show you right here. All right. All right, so we had two different positions here, and this was a level that we were kind of flirting with last week, right? So you guys can see that here was where we ended on Friday, which basically more or less invalidates the trade. Um, like I said, Harry Potter's, we typically don't leave for the weekend. You like that when it's kind of moving. It did end up breaking below, so I mean, I can show you kind of how the setup would work, right? So in this case, we can go back and you can see the price had gapped here the week before, and we pushed up, and again, it had respected the level before, it been front run, pushed and pushed and pushed. So the way we're setting this up is we were looking for this to kind of break through, right? The definition of a Harry Potter is just, it's nothing more than a momentum breakout trade. Um, and as, as you've heard before, you know, old support is new resistance and old resistance is new support. It kind of works the same way with supply and demand because of different factors inside of the market. So what we're looking to do, again, this was a buy area, right? Based off of this level, it was a buy area. Hit and bounce, hit and bounce. But after enough hits, you expect it to break. So we had a hit, a hit, a hit. Came down again, ended up hitting again, popping again, and then started to go through. And it ended. Now, let's just say this was like a Tuesday when this happened. Okay. The rules for this zone, again, you want to make sure that it's small. Okay. You want price to break through the zone. You want it to base for a bit and then come back up and retest. Now, if this was not over a weekend and there was a candle that was connecting these two and there was a, this red candle drop and then it based one, based one, and gave us a bit of space that you could visually see. Like a lot of times you'll see me drawing a, you know, a triangle inside of those zones, right? You'll see me drawing like a little triangle here. Whoops. I'll draw little triangles to kind of signify where that zone is. That's typically the type of entry we like to get. Now, again, this one is not perfect because it was a gap over the weekend, so it would not have qualified. But like I said, if this was a Tuesday instead of a Friday afternoon, when it drops down at bases, you can draw like a little triangle in there. It comes back up. This becomes your level of risk, okay? Um... And then again, you, you know, you want to make sure you have at least your one to three. Now, this one made it to about two and a half. So again, even had you traded it, which you wouldn't have because again, over the weekend, but had you traded it, you would have been up two to one on this one or two and a half to one in the morning uh, or in the overnight, actually. Right. Um, and that's it. And it's good typically for one for one shot. Um, it's very rare that I'll take the same kind of zone twice. Because remember, they're they're again, they are a break, a continuation through. So, you know, you need to have new orders and things like that established. But that's how the trade setup would have worked. You're using an old level that's been bounced off of at least three times. You know, you're looking for the break, and again, you can see one, two, three. It cleared the area, it hit it again, came up again, hit it, and then you can see how it based in here and stayed in here. And then when it breaks, that's what you're doing, is you're using this old buying area as your new selling area, and that's to push it back to the downside. Okay. Now you could have done the same thing in the other direction as well, right? You could have continued this. And instead of taking the south, you could have said, well, wait a second. What about the zone right here? Because again, we want to mark off gaps. And you could say, okay, sure, we can mark off gaps, okay? Now, this area has been hit quite a few times, right? So again, we already know there's something in here, but what did it do? It pushed, it respected, and pushed back down. Came back up again, again, boom. And then finally, number four is when we broke out of the top side of that zone. So what you do is you use the same zone now. Instead of being a selling zone where there's sellers, they're now buyers. So what did it do? It popped up. Here's your triangle, right? It came down and retested and then continued to push. So what it is, it's a momentum breakout using a prior violated zone that has pulled up, pushed back. There's your risk level and pushed higher, okay? Um, here, I'll take this and move this across. 
right there. And you can see we're literally right. It's right. It's right at the, the target right now. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense. All it is basically is when you understand supply and demand, the area, the reason why supply and demand works so well is because it's areas where we've seen prior buying and selling in the past. Now, there are most likely still people, again, if price got pushed down from a level or like right here, why did price go up? Well, it's because buyers stepped into this market and started purchasing. So price went higher, right? Most likely there were other people here that wanted to buy it. Because if there was only one person, it, the, the price would have stayed down there. But because there's, you know, demand, right? Lots of demand for something, price goes higher, right? Again, more people would love to get it at this price. So we're, we're kind of preying upon that. And then eventually it does this, this, the flip. And again, that's because of, you know, inside computers, yada, 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 all kinds of other stuff. All right. Hopefully that makes sense. If you have any questions, go ahead, type it in chat. And we just actually had somebody in the channel that passed their um, combine <laughs> with a, a Harry Potter tree. EFX. Um, female, one of our female traders. And she's been, she's been studying that one like a hawk. Yep. It's very, very simple. It's nothing too complicated. And like I said, I've never written a class on it. It's just something that I've talked about in chart schools and things like that. And it's one of those things that's, it's easy enough to explain. Um, and again, I could post a million things. I could put it up and I could sell it. But it's just one of those things that it just works so well. And it's still using supply and demand, what we teach in the classes. And again, if you don't know how to draw supply and demand, obviously that's kind of where the, you know, you run into the problem. Um, not being able to draw the correct supply and demand. Um, but yeah, that's that's what it is. All right, so we delete some of this stuff in here. All right, NQ. So areas that I'm looking for, um, I'm still kind of focusing on this area over here. Um, I can extend it across. And, and again, this is kind of a small wick over wick area. I'll kind of box it down to lower risk a little bit. Uh, remember, my price data is going to be slightly off on this one, uh, but most likely around 110, 103-ish area. And again, you can find it in your own chart. You'll see a wick over here and then prices push through that level. That's where I'm looking for price to go. So I wanted to continue rallying again. End of the week, pretty bad. Did the same thing where it pulled up and it hit it, it hit it, punched down. And, you know, we already know what this one does. I'm waiting for it to get a bit higher. I want to take this one short. I want price to continue to rally. I want bad news to come in. And I want this thing to continue to, you know, to tank. Um, could it happen tomorrow? Sure. In the overnight, this could continue to push higher. Uh, Pal could say something or the consumer confidence number could come in horrid. And that could literally turn and flip this back to the downside. So, again, in the overnight, I'm a bear. In the morning, I'm a bull um, as far as what I'm looking for on this one. Um, I just don't see anything rosy, especially with, you know, Macy's. I don't know if you guys saw. Macy's is now going out of business as well. So my mall has lost Sears, Nordstrom, Lord & Taylor, and Macy's, the one that's like closest to my house. The only thing we have left in there is J.C. Penner. So how long is J.C. Penny going to last next? <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we basically have an empty mall. But uh, yeah, so I'm looking for 110, 103 for shorts. Now, the S&P, kind of a similar situation. Now, this one, actually, we had a position set up uh, on a lower time frame, right? Yeah, look at this one. Um, I can put it on 15. We can see a little bit better. Okay, you guys can see I had a large zone, and we'd marked off a level right here, all right? Um, I can continue this across, and you can see we just missed the entry <laughs> twice. Actually, this one hit. Um, and you guys can see here, I ended up punching up. Came up, we missed it here, we missed it again. It finally triggered and then continued to the downside. So um, this triggered at about 8 o'clock this morning, down. And then what time did it reverse? 9.45, but it missed the entry. Actually, I think it hit it on the 30 minute, didn't it? Uh, actually, the 30 minute's not showing on this one. So yeah, you guys would not have been able to grab it on the 30. But yeah, look at that. 9.45 reversal. 9.45 reversal. So close to 10. But it did miss entry. And again, the 30 minute, you would have had a hard time grabbing it. So yeah, that was the position we had set up. I, for, again, had you taken that, uh, you're good for last week. Um, oops. Here's where we're looking for this guy. Again, price getting back up in this. And again, remember, my price is slightly off, but 30.75 ish. There's a small little level here. I wouldn't, I'm not worried that much about that little level. Um, I think this is a much better level. This thing was literally kind of just tanking. So again, bull in the overnight, bear at this point. Tomorrow morning, once we hit this, uh, you know, 30, 80-ish range. Um, JCPenney trading around or under $1 delisted. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't, I honestly don't see how it could survive. Yeah, I mean, being the only guy left in the mall, I just don't see. I mean, at this point, I think, you know, 
Amazon officially is credited with killing them all. I think it's done now. Yeah, they're taking... Our, ours had an extension built a couple years ago, and Lord and Taylor took it in, and it's actually really nice, but I don't know. There's just not... I don't know. I'm not a mall person whatsoever, but supposedly what they're doing is they're going to put a bunch more, like, I guess, instead of the big kind of... I don't know, whatever they're called, the banner stores or whatever, um, they're going to put a whole bunch of... like They're building it out to build it like just more mall, so it's going to be like an indoor strip mall, basically. Yeah. Yeah, I don't just don't see it lasting. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that one is... Uh, you know, on its way out as well. If I was an employee there, I'd be very nervous. Yeah, go Amazon. Kill everything. I'm telling you, the, the society is, is is diminishing based off of Facebook and Amazon. Google, I don't, I mean, I'm, I don't know. I don't think Google is killing the world, but I would say that Facebook and Amazon are the two, those two are like the evil empire. Yeah, I think they get the, the, the credit for putting this, the Amazon... And, 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 you know, again, putting the, my opinion is Amazon has put more mom and pops out than anybody else out there. Uh, and again, and now they're putting the big boys out. And uh, again, they put Toys R Us out. I mean, they're putting all the big name brands. I mean, you're not, you don't have a mom and pop toy store. You know, you just go to Amazon. And then things like Facebook have spread such hate and, and misinformation and have really tarnished so much. Um, again, it got, it, it, you know, for a while it did bring so much good for countries that needed exposure but at this point, it just there's just so much so much toxicity linked to it, um, hate, anger, and everything. I think has just been spread. Um, again, what's fake news? What's not fake news? It's all come from those type of sources. So, yeah, Amazon is evil, except if you work for them and they pay your you know they pay your salary. But then even then, they're probably still evil. <laughs> we actually have an Amazon. Um, I think it's Baltimore. I don't know. Amazon has like a couple warehouses here. Um, I'm waiting for the Amazon drones. Um, I, you know, I, you guys know I live in Maryland, so I'm pretty close to Annapolis. And we have all kinds of, like, you know, Navy stuff and, you know, stuff here. I'm waiting for the memes of the Amazon packages trying to deliver packages and something like an eagle, which can pick up a small child, attacks the drone. That's what I'm waiting for. I can't wait to see that. Um, I know there's got to be something out there already, but I'm waiting for the drones to attack the, you know, the eagles to attack the drones. Because I feel like it's coming. They're going to be like, hey, what's in that package? It's only a matter of time. After watching, I don't know if you guys saw this or not. This weekend, I saw the meme, not a meme, but like the, the little video, whatever they want to call the videos, not a vlog, but it's a video of the seagull eating the rat in New Jersey. Yeah, it was a rat the size of a small, I don't know, probably like a large kitten. And it literally just gulped it up and swallowed it down whole. Like it was like, a, you know, a sardine. It was like, holy crap. A seagull. Seagulls. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, oh God, I grew up near the beach. Um, but yeah, I'm waiting for the eagle taking the drones down. That's Amazon's future. Um, so yeah, guys, same thing. Taking this one short. Dow is very similar as well. Dow is already up in that area in the 30 minute. You can see it's already pushed away once. The only problem with this zone is it's been here a few uh, a few times, right? Um, this is the area that we marked off last week. And again, we hit here and dropped. We hit here. We dropped. Bounced off of this level. Popped up. Boom. Just collapsed down. Ended up. And this one had a nice rally off the push, right? Uh, you know, the, the gap last night. We're in that zone now, but... Again, one, two, three, four hits. Unfortunately, its strength is going to be much more diminished. So I'm afraid in the overnight, with the with cheering over the other ones, I'm afraid if this one starts to get a little bit of ground under it, this zone will break because it's only a 30-minute zone. I mean, it's been hit five times already. Um, although at this point, it does look like it wants to continue to push lower. So, And again, if you did take this short, the one of three is in a great location. Um, it's right above where the uh, pop is behind the, the candle. So again, great target location. Great target location. Uh, but again, in the overnight, this one continues to rally. Be looking for reversals tomorrow over here around the 25. Again, 944-ish range. This one's about about 10, um, 10 bucks off. Okay. Um, kind of the same idea. Uh, as far as takeoff points, mm, I don't like too much. Like I said, this one has rallied up pretty far. I don't think there was any reason why. Um, you know, I don't think there's any news that came out really that would be would justify, hey, listen, it's good. You know, the U.S. economy is good. Um you know, with with news every day of more things starting to close down, um, again, I think this is false hope. I think it, this is uh, people trying to short and getting, uh, you know, getting their stops around here. All right. Gold. So as you guys can see, gold didn't quite make it where we're looking for. Last week, we we're looking for this thing to go to 176. Good old 1776. And it did make it up there, man. This 30 minute level here just mess with this thing. Um, and again, 
we saw it over here. Um, here's where we close the week, uh, right in this zone. Again, um, right here, we did pop, push down. Again, same level, push down, same level, push down. Front run, same level, push down, same level, push down again. So this area right here around one, what, 1774 has been like rock solid. I would wait for it to break. And again, more sellers were step in. They did it already once and it did get front run. 1776 is shorts for me. Um, 1767 is probably a good target for those things. Um, and again, you'd be looking for something along those lines, right? Again, that would be fair. This, seven, this area right here where this price is kind of tickled, I think is an area that you're going to have some problems in. But same thing, it's hit. I mean, again, if we do get a break below, kind of really below 1765, there's a bit of a wick over wick here. But you do have to be looking at this zone and saying, hey, wait a second, what the heck happened here that made this thing jump so much in two candles? And can we can we take that back over again? So again, 1752, it has to be a you know a target for any type of shorts that you know drop if price drops below 1765. All right. Interesting setup. But yeah, this this has been rock solid level over here. Um, silver. So silver, we had zones up at 1794. This one kind of flirt, flirted around and tickled, right? Missed it here, tickled here, tickled here, didn't quite make it as kind of the push, but it has not gone all the way back down to the 1754. You can see the price did end up coming off this last week. Um, that came in on Friday at about noon. It dropped into it. Actually, let me make sure our time is correct. Uh, yes, Friday around 10, 9, 10 o'clock in the morning. Price hammered down, grabbed this level, and then shot right back off again. And that's one that we had talked about last Friday morning. Um, had you attended the chart school again, uh, the, the 8th and nine you would have been able to grab this one. So 17, this one had a nice move to the top side. Um, I'd say both these levels are probably still valid. The top one is probably a little stronger. And uh, again, you guys can see you would have ended up hitting your three to one within about an hour and a half off that entry, okay? Uh, and again, that was Friday morning. Uh, this Friday, by the way, guys, with it being the third and you know markets not really being there, um, we will not have a chart school this Friday morning, okay? Um, and next week, actually, I'll fill you guys in, but next Monday, we're probably not going to do a nighttime one because our adult, my men's league lacrosse, they moved our game. So I think I'm going to have a game next Monday night, and that would be our first game. I don't want to miss it. I don't mind missing games for chart schools, but not our first one. So that's probably what I'm going to do next Monday. But I'll let you guys know. But like I said, top and bottom, I think we're good. Uh, I'm going to go to Cad Yen. Oh, Baba Ganoush. Welcome for the follow, buddy. Um, all right. This one. Um, let's see. Where was it? I just had this one. There was a, a, it was sitting at something. All right. Here we go. So we've marked off this 17. I'm sorry. 79.13 and 79.36 at the top side. We're still continuing to push. So the reason why I'm bringing this one up is there's a little bit of a level kind of sitting here in the middle. And you guys can see it right in here. It's a small level. Um, I don't know how long this level here is going to hold. It wasn't really formed the best way. The fact that we are grinding up, I'm looking for levels up top, probably only hourly, most likely. I don't know. I, this is a big zone up top. I would like us to continue to push a bit higher with that GDP news tomorrow morning, right? With this GDP news at 830 tomorrow morning, I think there's going to be an interesting setup in this position. But unfortunately, looking to the left, there's just kind of crap level. So we do have a little bit more room to run. I think the 7913 level could be an interesting level. Um, from where we are right now, we're only about 10 pips from this kind of this kind of pullback zone here. I think you can see on the 15, yeah. 15, not even really. Um, it's one of those things. I want to find a, a place to get short. I want price to go there and stop before tomorrow morning. I do feel that this GDP number is not going to be great. And I, I really feel no matter what the GDP number is, I feel like it's going to give us a push. But we need to be in a zone. I know we can't get up here. That's going to be way too much in the overnight. That's going about, what, 60 pips? We're not going to be able to do that in the overnight. The ATR is only 77 total on the day. Um, but I do love I do love this zone up there. That's 79.13. I love the way that it came up at base. It banged off this level, pushed away, and price hasn't been up there. Um, just feel like it. I just feel like we're not going to. I want it, but I just feel like we're not going to get up there. But if we can get up there or if we kind of just meander around and push back down again, this is a potential trade setup for tomorrow, the 789 or the 7891 area. And again, it would be a short, which makes sense. I would be okay with a short going into that tomorrow. Again, with consumer confidence, Chicago PMI and, and PAL testifying, the catalyst on this one could definitely be the GDP month over month. Um, 
I don't, ex I mean, I, I'm pretty sure this number is going to be negative. I don't think they're going to have positive GDP. The question is, how bad could it be for them um, is really the true question. Um, like I said, it's forecast at... Minus 12 right now, and that would be pretty bad. Okay, so if this comes in at like 15, 16, again, that's going to give us quite a bit of weakness. So I really want to find a short here. Um, and again, one way to do this is about 7, 7.30 tomorrow morning. Give yourself an hour before news. See where we're at. Um, I don't, None of these are set and forget because I want to see what it does in the overnight. But again, if price manages to, to hold here and is here tomorrow before news, it's a short. If price goes higher, I do like this zone. Okay, it's not big. It's about 20 pips, and you can kind of shrink it a little bit. Um, you know, we can, you know, we could kind of shrink that a bit, um, probably up into here. We could, we could take this down to about 15 pips. Um, you can pull a level from basically from there it would be another area I'd be looking to get into. Okay. Um, before news. So I do like this one. Um, all right. Last but not least, let me pull oil. Um, there we go. All right. So. On the hourly, oil is in an interesting position, okay? Um, last time that oil was here, we have one of these going on. Whoops, not that, hold on. Hold on. Different platform, I forgot that I gotta click it different areas. All right, so today we had a nice kind of push out, right? Nice grind back up again, going back up into this 39, 59-ish area, okay? Um, I think where we are now, last time price was here, it got turned away. It is holding. It did. It didn't, wasn't able to push any higher. It was, and again, it was a failure to go higher situation. Let me pull this a bit here. Okay. Again, this is on the larger amount of level here. And again, you could have shrunk this a little bit, um, into really into there. Right. Um, but taking it down one level lower, we could have done this. Mm -mm. Color you guys can see. There you go. There's your failure to go higher. All right. So you could always throw a short position on here. Something along those lines. Uh, let's see. Uh, three to one is right there. And again, look at the way this is formed. While well, the last time that price was down in this level, back down here at thirty nine dollars, we saw a big explosion in price going higher. So at this point, you know, we needed the end of this uh, a couple hours ago. But again, it's pushing to the downside. It's already up over two to one um, to the short. Um, I do think that's an area where we will continue to push down in the overnight. Now, that I think is an area we need to watch out for. Okay, this area here is obviously something. Oops. Um, obviously, we need to mark off kind of this one as well. I mean, it's okay. I wouldn't. That one doesn't. That one doesn't scare me as much. Um, and then obviously to the downside, you need to focus on that as well. Okay, as big, you know, as potential levels. Um, oil this week. Hold on. Let me pull oil real quick. I'm pretty sure. Um, none USD. Let's see. Um, yeah, oil's still going to be Wednesday this week. So it's still going to be 1030 on Wednesday. And the forecast is only supposed to be 0.9 down. So that's not going to be too bad. Um, so yeah, a couple of things in this one. Like I said, I, I think this one is short in the overnight. Uh, we'll continue to push down. We may take a bouncer off this $39 level tomorrow. Um, See. Yeah, stay on the hourly for your analysis on that one. Yeah, I, I think I think down in the overnight, uh, I'm bringing this down to 39. We'll see if that level can hold. Um, I think the uh, the one down here is probably a better target. Um, this 37.80 is probably more of a Wednesday target. If I mean again, obviously if price crashes over the next two days, um, this would be a Wednesday target. Looking for a Wednesday entry long. We'll see where we are tomorrow night on that one. Uh, remember, tomorrow's chart school is going to be at noon, so we'll kind of see where we're placed um, for that one. All right. Um, things are still gloomy over here in West Texas for oil. Yeah, I mean, hearing that they're starting to close things down again, uh, the fact that that is on the radar, um, I definitely think doesn't bode well for demand. Uh, and like I said, they, they will obviously adjust it. I mean, ask James about that when they can adjust things with like, you know, a couple buttons, they can adjust the flow coming through the pipes. Um, but, you know, closing things down again will obviously start to hinder people. Now, on the flip side of that, it is a holiday weekend, right? It is 4th of July. 
Um, I don't know actually many people flying, but I know a lot of people taking road trips. Okay, I know a lot of people taking road trips and driving because obviously they trust their car. They don't trust airlines. Okay, so again, have they over predicted the supply this week? I don't know. That'll be more of a next week's situation. So many people, you know, traveled for July 4th. Uh, but I do think it is in a precarious situation with things closing back down again. Um, I was looking at pound dollar short. I would love to hear your thoughts on it. I did that one already, but I can jump back to it real quick. Um, we kind of went a little quick tonight. Uh, this guy right here. Yeah, there's a short in it right now that we just kind of, um, you know, it, it's bouncing off to an area where we had to drop basing and a drop. Uh, there's a couple other smaller levels in here as well. Um, again, very, very healthy downtrend at this point. I mean, it's putting in nice big impulses and then a small correction moves to the downside, particularly today. Um, I, I would ha I would say that, yeah, I'm all on board this one. I don't think the pound has anything coming in, um, but it is more of a trading. This is not something that would hold the entire week. There is a zone that it bounced off of once. Um, and again, on the four hour, you can see looking to the left over here, again, price came down, buyer stepped in, punched up, and then kind of made another attempt and they pushed it even higher. So you know, down in the 122, 25-ish range, I think there's going to be, there's potentially some buyers that may say, hey, listen, no, 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 it's not going to work for us. Because um, we've seen it happen twice. And again, it got front run before it made another attempt down. So I agree. I am short in the overnight, um, again, off of that level. And again, it's starting to push up and not a, not a horrible level. It's it's tiny risk. It's only about 15 pips. So it's small. Um, but again, I am watching out because you guys can see, you, you can see there's a green line. A bit below so i don't think this is a multi-day target um especially with so i talked about this earlier but if you weren't here um with the u.s having fourth of july we will kind of end the week um early uh obviously the european union doesn't sell <laughs> the uk doesn't celebrate the fourth of july it's not their favorite holiday by any stretch of the imagination um they actually have news that comes out on friday so they can kind of dictate what the dollar will be, strong or weak. And again, the easiest way to hurt hurt a country is make their currency more expensive, make it more you know stronger. Because remember, if the U.S. dollar is strong, not as many people will buy from them. Okay, um, you know, and it helps your own currency because your own currency is cheaper that they can buy from. So, typically, beat up on the country that's not there. So, whatever term we get in for the week is most likely what we'll follow. But uh, yeah, short term bearish, and then uh, again, getting better. Um, what else we got? Um, uh, we're up for four nights. Yeah, this week we'll only have, so this week's schedule will be tonight, tomorrow afternoon at noon. It'll be a Nadex hosted, right? It'll be a presentation hosted by Nadex at noon. I'll, I'll, I'll double, it'll be dual streamed here. So you better catch it. Wednesday, we'll be back on Wednesday night. And then Thursday we'll do... Probably a noon. I don't know. I may jump it to 8 a.m. just so we can get a full trading day in for that one. But maybe noon on Thursday. Um, I don't know. I'll let you guys know whether we do that 8 a.m. or noon. Uh, and then no nothing on Friday. Nothing on the 3rd this week. But if the U.S. market's open, we're not going to do anything. Um, it's, just, it's just not worth it. Okay. Um, and then we'll lay those out. But yeah, go ahead and follow the channel. And again, I, I try to update the schedule. But you can join the Discord channel and find out when we're on as well. Uh, would you be able to quit talk about brokers in your next stream? Uh, I can do it right now. I mean, if you have a question, what what do you have a question about a particular broker or like setting up your first broker? What I'd recommend too is, I don't know how familiar you are with Discord. Um, an easy way, okay, what I would do is this. Um, if you have Discord or you're familiar with it or you're okay downloading it, it's just, it's just a chat program. It's a Microsoft, I guess, funded program or something. It's free. If you click to the bottom of this window, you'll see down here, it says join our Discord channel. If you click on there, it should generate an, an automatic invite for you. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything. You can get in there and you can ask questions of some of the other traders in my group, um, as well as I can answer anything that you want. And then again, you can ask anything about brokers and, and, and personal preference. Um, you know, there are many different ways. It's because it's not just about what broker you're using. It's also about what you're using for charting. Um, this is... What I'm charting on right here is MT4, which pretty much all currency brokers have. But if you have other interests besides just currencies, if you're looking on other things, there are, you know, obviously they're proprietary platforms, um, a lot of different things you can trade. But you're more than welcome to join. You can ask anything that you want. Anybody inside of my room is allowed to answer questions. Um, if it's wrong, I'll chime in. Or if I disagree with it, I'll chime in. But everybody has pretty good opinions and everybody's really into helping each other. So, um, Let's see. I've tried, but their swap rates. No, I wouldn't use. 
Um, now I'm using Oanda. Yeah, I actually, my live accounts are through Oanda, but I do my charting through MT4. So I don't use the MT, I don't use MT4 as my broker. I use MT4 as my charting platform, but my live data comes from, this one actually is a, this the, this one right here that I'm using for chart schools is actually Admiral, Admiral Markets. This is for um, a funded trading program, uh, but my live accounts are all, I use MT4, uh, but the data comes from Oanda. So it gets a little bit more complicated, <laughs> but it's very easy to do. So that's why I said, join Discord. We can answer any questions you have about that. All right. All right, guys, with that said, it is 10 after 10. Let's go ahead and do our drawing. So right now we only have six people in, which is kind of crazy because Debbie has won three in a row. We've never had three in a row ever. Debbie did it. And Debbie also said, I'm here to win my fourth. It's me or Morena. She basically threw the gauntlet down and said, guys, there's no way that you can beat her tonight. She is unstoppable. That's what she said. She threw the, the gauntlet down. She did the major league. I'm going to point at the left bleacher and I'm hitting a home run. All right. So the last time somebody called their shot like this, I think was, was, was Wealth Builder. And he won two in a row that way. Um, I don't think Debbie actually wasn't here to win the last one. And Ernest wanted me to disqualify her, but her internet connection cut out. So we let her have it. Um, she didn't find out till after the fact. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, I will give you guys till I'll say 1 30. Cause I know there is a delay. And for some of you that it is a little bit longer, but we will see. Um, and again, everybody can have a ticket. So, um, <laughs> yeah, so even if you guys are new on the stream, all you have to do is hit exclamation point ticket. And what that'll do is that'll give you a free ticket into the drawing for Pip Chips. And you can use Pip Chips. They're just a currency uh, for the channel. Um, you just they, they, you accumulate them by watching the channel. And you can use them for things like mentoring. Um, I have a couple indicators up there. Um, who knows? Maybe soon enough I will maybe even put a course up there. We'll see. Uh, but most of my students just use it for mentoring. Uh, it's a way that you don't have to pay for it. And it's a way that I can just you know kind of say thank you for things. Um, all right, 30 seconds to go. So we're up to 11 tickets. It looks like Debbie, where's she at? She's sitting here with one. She's going with her one. This is like my grandmother. She's like, no, no, I'm just going to pick this racehorse. I like, I like what it does here. Look at this. Debbie's got one. If this was Ernest, if this was Ernest, Ernest would have, would have spent 500 pip chips already. I'm just saying. Mm -mm -mm. Here we go. But Debbie's going, I just need one. I only need one ticket. I only need one. All right, here we go. Everybody nervous yet? Like, I feel like I need to get music in here, right? I feel like I need it. I cannot believe that Ernest is the only one that put an extra tick in there. I can't believe it. Can't believe it. Debbie. Yeah, it's, I said 130, Debbie. I gave you one extra second. You didn't do it. Only two, Debbie? Debbie, if you would have won, you would have got 500 pip chips. I think additional pip chips only cost you like, I think it's like 10, 10 pip chips or something like that. Like you could have dropped, you could have bought 10 tickets, had like a 30 or 30 or, you know, almost a 50% chance of winning this thing and still made 450, pip, you know, an extra 400 pip pips. we got to talk about money management, Debbie. Pip chip management is important. <laughs> now, if she wins, I'm literally guys, I'm just never going to talk again because <laughs> I'm like telling her like, Debbie, you failed me. Your money management was bad she with her one ticket. And watch it. She's going to win. Ready? All right. Here we go. Let's see who takes the drawing tonight. The winner is... Oh, Q. <laughs> Thank you, Q. I don't have to eat crow on that one. <laughs> Q took it with just one ticket. Hey, guys. I think this is like the third time Q's won in the last two weeks. But look at that. <laughs> Q takes the 25 for tonight. So Debbie was unseated at three wins. But I did think she, I think she won three times with three tickets. So yeah, then there's that. And Q, by the way, just for the record, with her win last time, she bumped you out of fourth place. So I know, you know, you're coming back here. You got your 25 extra, but look at that. She jumped ahead of you. Had she won tonight, she would have been in first place. She would have went to, wow, she would have went to 770. Yeah. Would have been crazy. Woo! So much fun with the pet chips. All right, guys. With that said, I will catch you guys tomorrow at noon. Remember, there is no chart school tomorrow night. Um, only at noon tomorrow. Make sure you get in. And yes, 
If you log on and watch the channel when it is live, you accumulate pip chips. I will be I will be putting on a contest tomorrow since there will be no pip chips given out. But also, please make sure you attend the Nadex one because they like seeing the numbers for the people attending over there. So I think we were at like 49 people last week. Um, I'd love to get that number over 50. It would be awesome. Oh, 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 I forgot to tell you guys. Because we had such overwhelming success with the first education summit, they have thrown the idea together or thrown the kind of idea out that they would like to do another one at the end of August. Okay, little bit different of a format this time. They are mentioning doing one day with nothing but strategies for binaries, the next day doing nothing but strategies for call spreads, and then the last day doing strategies, nothing but knockouts. Thought that was pretty interesting idea. Said I would be in. I don't know if I'll do one day, two days, or all three days. Heaven is audio. I probably won't do all three days because people get tired of hearing from me. Um, you know, but yeah, I thought it was pretty interesting. That I'm probably the only one of the only traders that trades call spreads anymore. So, but yeah, we'll see that. All right. So with that being said, guys, I am out of here for the night. I will catch you guys tomorrow at noon. You guys have a good evening. Take care.